and welcome to another treatment of the International Sunday School Lesson. Today's lesson is entitled, Faith of an Anointer. And it's taken from the book of Luke, 7th chapter, verses 36 through 39, then jumping up to verses 44 through 50. And it's for April the 24th, 2024, spring quarter, lesson number 8. Now, a little background information. Today's lesson is talking about one of the other examples of the Pharisees trying to trick and trap Jesus. It's real obvious from the way that the Pharisee was acting when he invited the Lord to his house. It is real obvious that he was one of those who was trying to trick Jesus into doing something that they could uh, have him executed for. And that is pretty obvious in today's lesson, by the way, this particular Pharisee acted. And also, this is one of the three times that Jesus was anointed right before the crucifixion. And it takes place in one of the Galilean towns, probably non that that where it takes place at now Luke 7:36 one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him and he went into the Pharisee's house and reclined at table now during this time period uh, people often when they ate they ate in a reclined position and that's what how Jesus was when he was here that night. Now, Luke 7, 36 through 38. And behold, a woman of the city who was a sinner, when she learned that he was reclining at table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of ointment, and standing behind him at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now, we need to notice a couple of, of things here today. First off is the how that the lady brought an alabaster alabaster flask of ointment. That was a fairly expensive uh, thing. Also, notice how that she was weeping. She was weeping and began to wet his feet with her tears. And she wiped them with a the hair of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with ointment. So she was being very submissive and humble in the way that she was approaching Jesus Christ. Paul said in the book of Romans 5, 6 and 8, 6 through 8, For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die, but God showed his love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You see, Jesus loves the sinners. Jesus reaches out for the sinners, and this woman was a sinner. Now, there are a lot of conjecture that she was a prostitute. We really don't know if she really was a prostitute. There has been a little bit of conjecture that this was Mary Magdalene. Doesn't really look like it was Mary Magdalene because the location was so different. But regardless, this woman was there wanting forgiveness, she was seeking the Lord Jesus Christ. And yes, she was coming as a sinner, but she was humble and seeking the Lord Jesus Christ. Luke seven thirty nine. Now, when the Pharisee who had 
invited him, saw this, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would have known who and what sort of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. Wow. <laughs> you could hear the arrogance and you see the difference in the mindset between the Pharisee and this woman. And all of the inconsideration, the inhospitality that this Pharisee showed Jesus is what really demonstrates that he was one of those who was seeking to find fault with Jesus. He was seeking to find fault with the Lord. And the Sunday school lesson does not include the next four verses, but they are, I think, very important in the entire lesson more or less hinges on these next four verses. So I'm going to go ahead and read them. Luke 7, 40 through 43. And Jesus answered, answering said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. And he answered, say it, teacher. A certain money lender had two debtors. One owed 500 denarii and the other 50. When they could not pay, he canceled the debt of both. Now, which of them will love him more? Simon answered, The one, I suppose, for whom he canceled the larger debt. And he said unto him, You have judged rightly. So we see here, and I tell you, I have seen people who have uh, had a real rough spirit go of it at times and have really went out there and done the wrong things and and they get their heart right with God and come in to the to the house of God and they get saved and you talk about some of the most on fire Christians that you can ever be around is a bunch of people who have been drug dealers and prostitutes and let them get saved they work for the Lord. They show love. They show humility. They show righteousness because they know what the Lord saved them from. This business about people being self-righteous and thinking they don't need forgiveness and everything, that is garbage. That will be that is the worst state in the world to think that you don't have anything to be forgiven for. That is the worst state of being a reprobate, is if you don't believe you've do, ever done anything wrong. Luke 7, through 48. Then turning toward the woman, he said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but the time, but from the time I came in, she has not ceased to kiss my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore, I tell you, her sins which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much, but he who is forgiven little loves little. And he said to her, Your sins are forgiven. Now notice this about this Pharisee Simon. He gave the Lord no water for his feet. That was a normal Thing for people to do during that time period was to give people water for their feet so they could wash their feet. And if they were really hospitable, they had their servant wash their feet. And if they were super hospi hospitable, they washed the person's feet themselves. Jesus told the Pharisee, you gave me no kiss, 
but from the time I came in, she has not ceased to kiss my feet. He didn't, the Pharisee didn't meet Jesus with a kiss. He didn't show any kind of hospitality. But this woman has been kissing the feet of the Lord continually. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. It is real obvious that this Pharisee was going to get Jesus in the house so he could drum up some kind of charge on the Lord. And he hadn't shown any kind of hospitality. But this woman showed Jesus love and humility. Luke 7, 49 and 50. Then those who were at the table with him began to say among themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? And he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. See, that is an act of God. Jesus is the one of the persons of the Trinity, the Almighty Son of God. That is who came to this world to hang on that cross, was the Almighty Son of God who can forgive sins. But the Pharisees and the big shots of the day they had a hard time with that. You know, looking back at Mark, the in Mark 2, 5 through 7, and when Jesus saw their, fa saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their hearts, Why does this man speak like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? That's right. Who can forgive sins but God alone? But Jesus is the almighty son of God. Now, a couple concluding thoughts. First off, show humility. We're all sinners. Every last one of us have fallen short. We all need forgiveness. Don't be arrogant. Don't look down on people. Don't. Uh, think you're some kind of big shot because none of us are big shots, okay? All of us need the blood of Jesus to cleanse us from our sins. Other thing is, and no matter what you've done in your life, the Lord Jesus Christ will take you back. He will forgive your sins if you seek him and show humility, Okay? Well, friends, good Lord willing, I'll be back with you next weekend.